Welcome to the Hero Products Group Basic Training. Today we will be focusing on the use of the Hero A961 High Volume Automatic Dispenser. The video will be broken into three segments. Parts identification, daily maintenance, and how to dispense. The parts on the A961 that you should be familiar with is the roller assembly for your five gallon buckets. the flip up one gallon shelf, the capper assembly with the moisture ring and sponge, inside the shield here you will find your nozzle cluster with your laser aiming light. Slide your computer shelf over to access the canisters. Hello, my name is Ian. I'm one of the customer service representatives for Hero Products, and I'm going to be showing you how to use a Timwise program. So the first thing you want to do is be on your desktop, and you're going to look at the uh, upper left here. This is where the icon normally is for TimpWise. It looks like a teardrop icon here. Now be aware that it's possible somebody could have moved it into a different location. So if you don't see it exactly where you think it should be, just scan around your desktop and see if you can find it. Now besides finding it up here, you may also find it on your taskbar. Uh, as you can see down here on the bottom left corner, it also says TimpWise POS. And if you simply click on that one time or twice on the one on your desktop, it should open up the, uh, the program for you. So now, as you've noticed here, it doesn't open into a full screen. It opened up minimized and on your taskbar. So what you need to do is click on this, and now you can see the Tempwise program. So the very first thing that I want to show you is way down here in the bottom left, below this word exit. It says demo and operator. Now demo is fine right now because I'm demonstrating this to you and how to use it. But in a normal operating environment, they should say connected and operator. If it says demo, uh, it's most likely because, because someone has turned off the machine by mistake and not realized and then opened up the program. Uh, you can go ahead and turn on the dispenser if that's the case, or perhaps you might need to turn off the dispenser, wait about 30 seconds and then turn it back on. It should start to agitate at that point. Uh, then you can restart the program and you should be able to use it just fine. Now, the next thing that we're going to show you here are these buttons. So you have login, canisters, and exit on the left. And on the right, you have delete formula, print label, edit formula, and manual formula. Now, depending on your setup, you may not have all of these buttons. You may have more or you may have less. You may also have some different options up here on the left and up here on top. Now, that's all okay. You don't need to worry about those right now. You'll see those when you get your dispenser and when you have your setup. So for daily maintenance, what you need to do is look on the left-hand side and find this canister button. Click on that, and it's going to open up your canister screen. Now, as you can see on this screen, you have a list of all of your colors, and these may vary depending on the customer. Uh, you also have a visual rep representation here of how much colorant is in the canister. That's what this yellow, black, and brown line, etc. Uh, mean. And you also have a numeric value for how much colorant is in that canister. Uh, you have the, the add or remove paint bucket. You also have a beaker here. So let's explain this to you. First of all, you have this red line and this yellow line on the visual representation of how much colorant's in the canister. The yellow line is a warning. So it'll warn you when you get down to this level that there's not enough colorant and that you need to start adding more fairly soon. However, it will allow you to dispense. The red line, however, means it's an alert and that you cannot dispense until you add more colorant. So looking down here, you can see that this pink bucket is yellow on our number 10 raw umber. If you click on this, it gives you the option to add colorant. Now, typically, if I add a quart, I would say I've added 0.95. The reason for this is that most people don't scrape every last drop of colorant out of their quart container. Uh, so adding 0.95, it's a little bit more accurate usually. Accurate usually. So go ahead and click on Add Quart, click on OK, 
and now we have 1.85 and this yellow is now gone this is no longer an alert so if we look at the green right now it's perfectly fine but let's just show you what it looks like if it's not and we'll remove by putting a negative 1.50 quartz now this time instead of clicking on it I, with my mouse I actually hit enter to remove it so in this case we've actually emptied out the canister completely and as you can see this is now red so what we can do is we can again click on this beaker and say we've added uh, two quarts of colorant we could put in here that we've added two we could also put in here that we've added 1.9 to be a little bit more accurate and just a little more safe you don't want to tell it that there's more colorant in there than what's actually in there you always want to err on the side of a little less than what you think might be in there and now just to go over this one more time very quickly you can tell the canister how much colorant is in that canister by simply typing in the number you can use the pink bucket here by clicking it to remove or add if you'd like to remove one quart you would simply put a negative one that's going to remove one quart of colorant for you and again you can use it to add by typing any value that you need in there so again we'll try 0.95 and now that's what it's added so now we want to take a look at this beaker icon this is the purge icon and it can either be blue as you see it now or it can be red if it's red that means that you need to complete a purge so you can click on the one beaker and purge that one individual circuit and follow the prompts on screen now it's going to open up the capper and the sponge and it's going to ask you to insert the can as it is now it's going to then purge the circuit when you click on OK. Now what you just saw there was extremely fast and isn't what you'd see in a normal operating machine. Remember, I'm in demo mode right now. So what you're going to see is going very quickly. Uh, under normal circumstances, what a purge consists of is moving the pump forwards and backwards a set amount of times. And then at the end of that cycle, it will dispense a set amount of colorant and what this does is it generally keeps the pumps just running smoothly and keeps them good and healthy. Now this is really important for those days that you don't use a particular color or over the course of a weekend when you come back and you click on purge all. It keeps all of those pumps running daily and what this does is exactly as I had said it keeps everything good and healthy and keeps things from getting stuck and plugged up especially the nozzles. So what we would typically do though, instead of purging just one at a time, is you would purge them all. And this is where the daily maintenance starts. You do this each day. Uh, most times it's done in the morning, but you could also do it in the afternoon or at night. Uh, in some circumstances, if it's extremely uh, dry, you might need to do this twice a day, but that's fairly rare. Now, what you would do is simply click on purge all on the bottom left of the screen. And again, it's going to open up that capper assembly, give you access to the sponge, and it's going to ask you to insert the can. Once you click on OK, it's going to purge each one of these circuits. And it's going to take, again, longer than what you've seen it do on screen. While it's doing its purge, what you need to do is take the sponge and the cup to a sink, and you need to open up the cup, you need to remove the sponge, you need to clean it out, and you need to fill that cup up with clean water and put the new sponge on top. The new sponge will float on top of that water and then you put the lid back on the cup. A little bit of water will overflow. You might want to pour a little bit extra out and then you take it back to the machine. You put the, uh, the cup back onto the capper and allow the purge to finish its process. Once it's done, the cap will close and then you're ready to go for the day. Now we're showing you how to clean the nozzles. Just use any toothbrush gently scrub away at the nozzle tips until you're satisfied that they're clean and that there's no color and stuck in between. You can also use a piece of moist paper towel as you see here to gently dab at the nozzles. Just be careful not to push them up as you'll see in the next clip. Now when you put the seal back on make sure that the wide side is facing down. It's very common to clean out a plug nozzle with a paper clip or something similar. When doing so, you need to be very cautious that you don't push too hard. As you see here, you can push the nozzle up and out of the housing. And finally, you can start agitation. Now, say if you've just added a quart of colorant and you want it to mix in with the colorant that's already in a, in a canister, you can click on start agitation. 
it will agitate for three minutes for you as you can see on the screen here it's counting down uh, once it's done it'll automatically stop or you can stop it early just by clicking on stop all right so now what we'll do is head back to the main screen of tempwise you can do that simply by clicking ok down here on the bottom right i'll direct your attention up to the upper left of the screen and at this one quart uh, icon beside that you have one gallon and then five gallon now I want you to notice two things. First of all, uh, we have five gallons selected, and the formula is 18.25 shots for AXZ permanent yellow. So what's happening here is that this is actually a one quart formula. If we go to one quart, you can see it's still the same thing. Now, having one of these selected is different than actually double clicking it. When you double click it, that's an actual selection. So if we go to one quart now, we have it so it's highlighted, but it's 7Y29 shots, which is actually the five gallon formula. Uh, so that's something that you always need to be aware of when you're choosing which size can you want to put something into. Make sure you double click it to change the actual values of the formula. Uh, now these, these sizes up here for cans will also vary depending on your, configura your configuration. Uh, looking below the formula here, uh, you can see these different uh, cylinders, and these just represent how much colorant is going into the can. Uh, it allows you to sort of get a visual representation of it. Uh, so blue is obviously the most, followed by yellow, and then the, uh, the lamp black down here is next. And if it was time to dispense this formula, you would insert your, your in this case, one quart can into, onto the shelf. You would click on dispense, and it's gonna open up your cup. It's going to ask you to insert a can, and you would say okay, at which point it would fill it up for you. Uh, it says end of dispense, you can click okay, and it closes it. Now, if you wanted to do multiple cans, you can come up here to the top, and where it says one can, you can actually change that. So you could change it to three if you wanted to. Uh, we're also going to change this to five gallons by double clicking on it and this time it's going to take a little bit longer to do the actual dispense uh, because there's more color coming out so we'll click on OK at this point the cap would be open and it starts to dispense the colors for you uh, now here's something that people will run into sometimes and before I go into this I want to mention one more thing and again that's what you're seeing happen here is much faster than what you would see if you were actually doing this on a dispenser uh, at your location it's doing it in demo mode so it can dispense at just an extremely high speed uh, something not possible in real life so what you would do here coming back to this formula uh, not available screen some components are not available alert level on blue uh, at this point you can either abort the dispense or you can view the issue and in this case the issue is that there's not enough blue for us to continue so what we need to do is click on add and you need to physically go and pour your colorant into your canister your blue canister and then tell it how much you've added uh, I'm gonna say that we've added 0.95 of a quart and we're going to click on OK, and now it's added that much color in for us. At this point, you see no more problems, nothing else is in red, and you can click on OK, and now you can see that we're on can number two of three, and you want, it wants us to insert the can, so when you do, you click on OK, and now we're on can three of three, and it's doing the third can for us now. And again, it's warning us, that we are at the point where we should probably fill up blue again. Uh, we can either click OK to close this or we can go to the canister screen and we can actually uh, adjust it from here. So if you were to pour in your colorant again, you could tell this again that you've added 0.95 of a quart. We'll click on OK and head back to the main screen. Um, from this point, you now know how to dispense, but there's still some more things you can do. Uh, we're going to put this back down to one can and notice the percent sign up here on the upper right you can click on that and you can actually adjust this formula uh, so 7y29 right now if we wanted to increase that uh, to make it 100 percent darker you could uh, you could put it back to zero so it's just as default 
or you could you know remove a certain amount to make it you know 25% lighter so 25% of the colorant is now being removed put this back to zero another thing you can do is edit the formula manually so down here in the bottom right you can click on edit formula and at this point uh, if you wanted to just use 14 instead you could do that and you could dispense from here and go ahead and do that now we'll exit this the formula is back to normal and you can also do manual formulas so a manual formula is if you know exactly what it is you want to dispense uh, lamp black you want you know one Y uh, with uh, 12 point two five shots uh, maybe you want to have uh, two of this and 12 of that you could go ahead and dispense it insert the can you'd say okay and it would dispense now every time that you click on dispense it's going to open up your cap it's going to allow you to put in your can and wait for you to click OK before it actually goes ahead and does anything. And we can go ahead and exit this screen now. So that is how you use the TimWise software. Uh, go ahead and call the Hero Customer Support Line if you require any further help. It's 1-800-494-4376 and follow the prompts on the telephone system. Thanks.